in general, we can use the empirical count of events in the observed data to estimate the probabilities. And a commonly used technique is called a maximum likelihood estimate, where we simply normalize the observed count. So if we do that, uh, we can see, we can compute these probabilities uh, as follows. For estimating the probability that we uh, see a word occurring in uh, a segment, we simply normalize the count of segments that contain this word. So let's first take a look at the, the data here. On the right side, you see I listed some um, hypothesized data. Uh, these are segments. And uh, in some segments, you see both words occurred. They are indicated as ones for both columns. In some other cases, only one word occurred. So only that column has one and the other column has zero. And in all, of course, in some other cases, none of the words occurred. So they are both zeros. And for estimating these probabilities, we simply need to collect the three counts. So the three counts are first, the count of W1, and that's the total number of segments that contain word W1. It's just the ones in the column uh, of W1. We can just count how many ones we have seen there. The second count is for word 2, and we just count the ones in the second column. And these, this would give us the total number of segments that contain W2. The third count is uh, when both words occurred. So this is time we're going to count the segments where both columns have ones. And, and then so this would give us the total number of segments where we have seen both W1 and W2. Once we have these counts, we can just normalize these counts by n, which is the total number of segments. And this will give us the probabilities that we need to compute mutual information. Now, there is a small uh, problem when we have zero count sometimes. And in this case, we don't want a zero probability because our data may be a small sample. And in general, we uh, would believe that uh, it's potentially possible for a word to occur in any context. So to address this problem, we can use a technique called smoothing. And that's basically to add some small constant to these counts. and then. And so that we don't get a zero probability in any case. Now, the best way to understand the smoothing is to imagine that we actually uh, observed more data than we actually have. So we pretend we observed some pseudo segments that are illustrated on the top, on the right side, on the slide. And these pseudo segments would contribute uh, additional counts of these words so that no event will have zero prob probability. Now, in particular, we introduced the four pseudo segments. Each is weighted one quarter. And these represent the four different combinations of occurrences of these words. So now each uh, event, each combination will have uh, at least one count or at least a non-zero count from these pseudo segment. So in the actual uh, segments that we observed, it's OK if you, we haven't observed all the combinations. So more specifically, you can see the 0.5 here actually comes from the two ones in the two pseudo segments. Because each is weighted one quarter, we add them up, we get 0.5. And similarly, this 0.05 comes from one single pseudo segment that indicates the two words occur together. And of course, in the denominator, we add uh, the total number of pseudo segments that we added. In this case, we added uh, four pseudo segments. Each is weighted one quarter. So the total, the sum is actually one. So that's why in the denominator, you see a one there. So this basically concludes the discussion of how to compute the mutual information, how to use this uh, for syntactic relation discovery. Now, so to summarize, um, Syntagmatic relation can generally be discovered by measuring correlations between occurrences of two words. We introduced the three concepts from information theory. Entropy, which measures the uncertainty of a random variable x. Conditional entropy, uh, which measures the entropy of x given we know y. And mutual information of x and y, which measures the entropy reduction of x due to knowing y. 
or entropy reduction of y due to knowing uh, x. Uh, they are the same. So these three concepts are actually very useful for other applications as well. That's why we spend some time to explain this in detail. But in particular, they are also very useful for discovering synagmatic relations. Uh, in particular, mutual information uh, is a principal way for discovering such a relation. It allows us to uh, have values computed on different pairs of words that are comparable. And so we can rank these pairs and discover the strongest synagmatic relations from a, a collection of documents. Now note that uh, there is some relation between syntactic relation discovery and the paradigmatic relation discovery. So we already discussed the possibility of using uh, BM25 to achieve uh, weighting for uh, terms in the context to potentially also suggest the candidates that have syntactic relations with the candidate word. But here, once we use mutual information to discover syntactic relations, we can also represent uh, the context with uh, this mutual information as weights. So this would uh, give us another way to represent the context um, of a word like a cat. And if we do the same for all the words, then we can cluster these words or compute the similarity between these words based on their context similarity. So this provides yet another way to do term weighting for paradigmatic uh, relation discovery. And so to summarize this whole part about the word association mining, we introduced the two basic associations called the paradigmatic and the syntagmatic relations. These are fairly general. They can be applied to any items in any language. So the units don't have to be words. They can be phrases or entities. Uh, we introduced uh, multiple statistical approaches for discovering them, mainly showing that uh, pure statistical approaches are feasible, um, are available for discovering both kinds of relations, and they can be combined to perform joint analysis as well. These approaches can be applied to uh, any text with no human, human effort, and mostly because they are uh, based on counting of words. Yet they can actually discover interesting relations of words. Uh, we can also use different ways to define context and segment, and this would lead to some interesting variations of applications. For example, the context can be very narrow, like a few words around a word, or um, a sentence, or maybe paragraphs. Uh, using different contexts would allow us to discover different flavors of paradigmatic relations. And similarly, counting co-occurrences using, uh, let's say, mutual information uh, to discover syntagmatic relations, we also have to define the segment. And the segment can be defined as a narrow um, text window or a longer text article. And this would give us different kinds of associations. These discovery associations can support many uh, other applications in both information retrieval and uh, text data mining. So here are some recommended uh, readings. Um, if you want to know more about the topic, the first is a book with a chapter on collocations, which is quite relevant to the topic of these lectures. The second is an article about uh, using uh, various statistical measures to discover lexical atoms. Those are uh, phrases uh, that are non-compositional. For example, hot dog is not really a dog that's hot. Blue chip is not a chip that's blue. And the paper has a discussion about some techniques for discovering such uh, phrases. The third one is a new paper on uh, a unified way to discover both paradigmatic relation and syntagmatic relations using random walks on word graphs. Uh, 